Fantastic, fantastic player. And so we'll see how it ends up shaping up in the actual doubles match as we get into game one. Gonna be on Pokemon Stadium 2. Light opens up with lasers and gets dash attacked for his troubles. An interesting strategy to be sure. Uh, I actually like the way that this is planning out where Light and Tilde kind of sticking by each other. They're actually doing synchronized jumps and landings. It's so far they're getting nice solid damage in here. But the risk of that is that when one of them gets hit, if they're too close, both of them might get hit as a result. Yeah, I really feel like when it comes to how uh, how both of them are going to have to play this game and fight both of them, I mean, Tilde and Light, they're going to have to play on the Razor's Edge because PK Chris, newly minted on the New York PR, is going to be throwing out some of, so much of these aerials and covering so much space. It's going to be on Tilde and Light to weave in and out and will rely on their partner to reliably whip punish. Oh, uh -oh. no. I, he can just do this forever. <laughs> he can get both of them in the yo-yo. Oh, Ness. Oh, oh Ness. Oh, man. It comes down with a couple aerials. That, both of them wound up off stage at the same time, and it was curtains. They were done at that point. The fact that he can just charge yo-yo and it hits every single... You could have an entire four-person team off stage, and they would all be getting hit by that yo-yo. Ooh, amazing reaction on Light's part. I mean, kind of infamous for his reaction time, being able to twitch and see, wow, PK Chris is coming down with an aerial. Time to blow him up with an up smash. But as we see here, only player four is left with its uh, with their uh, final uh, first stop online. And they've been doing a great job of stock tanking and being able to flow and force uh, force Tilde and Light into whiffing, which then allows PK Chris to come in with these whiff punishes, find these grabs. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Ooh, this is a possible 2v1 situation, but Light, the fact that Fox is so fast means that even if you throw him across the stage, he's going to be right back in your face in just a hair of a moment. All right. Oh, wow, did you see that back air into grab PK Chris? And player four are absolutely paying attention to what each other is doing, anticipating the moves and following through, even on these tiny situations. They're just trading spaces, slowly advancing, making the distance, and oh man, another back throw. It's a little bit stale, so that one's not actually going to be killing, but you know, Light and Tilda, I think they were seeded number one because of just the caliber of those individual players, but maybe they need to figure out their synergies a little bit more because PK Chris and Player 4 are dominating them at the moment. Yeah, they can't just come in here and better player both of these two at the same time. Like, PK Chris is really doing a great job of covering a player for when they come out with these whiffs. Finding the up tilt backer, though, it's a, I mean, a tried and true conversion for Falco at this point, being able to close out that stock on a very lightweight peach. This game is suddenly getting a lot more even, and Falx really knows how to put on the damage when he finds these starters. Yeah, a single mistake. You saw that PK Chris forward aired player four just by accident, and all of a sudden player four eats all of this, sorry, PK Chris ate all of this damage as a result. This is, like, they're playing very well right now, but even here at this point, it demands perfection. Oh, this is similar to what we saw earlier, where instead now it's player four and PK Chris who are both trapped at the ledge. The stage control has been dominant for green team for the last 30 seconds or so. You see how the damage has been racking up and a beautiful up smash reaction from Light. This is now a 2v1 situation. Not only that, it's 2v1 against these individual players who are some of the favorite to take the entire tournament for singles. Yeah, they're missing a couple of these throw conversions, but when you're, be able, when you're able to put on so much pressure and just be on PK Chris at a drop of a hat, missing the timing as hey, Tony's been known to get those before, but again, dropping a combo off down air, it looks like he mistimed this, uh, the fastball just a little bit, but this alleged trap is certainly something to be afraid of. There it closes out. Yeah, Fox back air is not gonna, not gonna miss out that, on that kill twice in a row. As Tilde and Light scrap him. Um, Get out of a scrappy one. They were down four stocks to two, and were able to bring it back ever so slowly, and or more often than not, much, much quicker. They <laughs> sped it up and then slowed it down at the end to force PK Chris yeah. into that nest mentality. At the same time, definitely you could see that they're not 100% familiar with how the other one wants to play. At the end there, there was, like we've seen some other teams when they get in that, you know, two players ledge trapping this, the, you know, the one, it's just like clockwork, just like, just cogs in a machine. Whereas right here was they were kind of feeling each other out, maybe trying to react a little bit. In that situation, they were up by enough that uh, but I think they're doing a, okay, they're doing a button check. Perhaps there was maybe, that would definitely change how we would interpret that last game. If there was some type of controller issue, 
um, for either team, actually, then that would... Uh, I'm not going to say we should throw invalidate the results, but nonetheless... Oh, Devin's trying to show us something over here. Oh, wait a minute. What? <laughs> what? Uh, th thank you. Good eye, Devin. Excuse me? Look at him. He's, he's just got a, he the tip of no. his hat. No. Hold on a second. Th I don't see it. I don't... I do not see where his head is outside of the shield. Yeah. Hold on. His <laughs> foot... He not only is shielding, but that foot is like six... It's like two feet away. Uh, Where is it? This is frame, right? Yeah. Did, I, I th it's not even like he dropped shield. The shield is still there, yeah. right? It's barely not a full shield, because you can see at the bottom of his foot is poking out of his shield as well. So it's not a full shield, but come on, man. <laughs> he's got that. He needed the big He needed the big head for the psychic powers. I guess it backfired on him. Yeah, he's a little bit top. Like, I wonder if Ness can swim. <laughs> He just he just turns over, <laughs> little legs dangling in the air. Because that's the thing, right? So certain dog breeds have too big of a head to where they can't swim. So. That's hilarious. And now I want to put those dogs in a bathtub. <laughs> just to, you think if you put Bro. like 17 chihuahuas in a bathtub, they would start synchronized swimming with their legs in the air? Thanks. Like a Busby Berkeley I movie? chihuahuas can also swim. Wait, chihuahuas can swim? I'm pretty sure. But their heads are so big. What dog breed has a bigger head than a chihuahua? Boston Terriers. Fair. <laughs> Yeah, you know, they, so fun fun dog fact, I guess, for everybody in the stream. Certain dog breeds can't swim, so be careful. Don't toss your <laughs> Boston Terrier in the Boston River, I guess. Don't, please don't. <laughs> As we see a, well, it is a it, K, canine reliant, uh, ro related. Foxes of Volpine coming out here, and <laughs> we have got ourselves game two on Town and City, listening to KK, who's also a canine. <laughs> hey, there we yeah. go. <laughs> and honestly, the way I would tie it in is I would say that Light is a beast, because That's look at how true. he is starting off this game already about, about 70, no, sorry, 90% dished out onto, uh, onto Red Team, whereas Tilda's taken almost no damage. That's like the first time I've seen him get hit in almost 30 seconds. Oh, yeah, they wanted to see a, a little bit of missed synergy there, trying to see how they could get the proper combo off of up throw into down air, as PK Chris is doing exactly what uh, Ness is so good at, going air to air and oftentimes finding these amazing trades. But there is that back and closing out for t uh, closing out for player four, trying to uh, trying to reciprocate, but Light is still surviving. Oh, Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> this is the situation we saw before, where both of them were off stage at the same time, and that was honestly amazing. What a beautiful trade right there. Yes, PK Chris loses the stock, but he had the higher damage, and I think it was definitely worth it considering Light was about to respawn and save his teammate. So, you know, the equalizer. We are now at an even game, but with two stocks apiece. Player four, I've, I mean, we haven't been really talking about player four too much because he's oftentimes sitting on the back end waiting for PK Chris to, to throw out something a little bit more risky. But player four's positioning has been immaculate. Being able to find his way down at home till they died. <laughs> oh no, he up being off the stage. I think that's what happened. We'll have to get a look at that later, but that is a major tone shift in this game that was going so well. Now, being a stock down, Tilde's going to have to put everything into Falco's incredible jump and his own evasiveness. But PK, Chris, has been so good coming off of ledge. These up airs, phenomenal. It's honestly, the aggression is paying off for him. And look at this light at 125%. He's going to be dying to a neutral air out of shield. Ness has some of, like, honestly, some of the best out of shield options in the game. So at those later percents especially, it can just be so hard to survive against him. And, oh man, both wow. of these... Oh, he's going down low though. He's gonna be able to make it. Oh, that was almost the most beautiful angle I've ever seen. He needed to go to the right because otherwise I think it would have hit into the stage. Oh yeah. But not quite able to do it, meaning that we do have a relatively even game here. Player four being the stock tank, but there's only so much you can uh, tank in the face of light. Going to be cleaning it up now. The percentages are in red team's favor, but green team, we've seen their damage output. We've seen what they can do once they get a single meaningful hit started. Yeah, oh man, and we're getting a real look at Light's uh, aggression here as he backs off in order to focus on PK Chris, who was holding center so well. So many of these counters coming out for player four have to be scouted at this point. A couple missed combos. They're respecting the danger that comes from uh, PK Chris and how willing he has been to go air to air. 
doing so well. Great grab coming out from Light. I love that. That both of the red team players were trapped in the corner, and then they just figured out how to break it up, and they managed to sandwich in between. And with that stage control, it's led to this. Light is the only remaining player for green team. Player for them at 111%. He is the one who's most likely going to be dying if that were to happen. Oh, man, he was looking for that back air. If he, Light could have done that, who knows? There's it? the up smash! The weave! We, the weave out of danger from PK Chris. He's throwing out all of these aerials, but he finds the grab. He finds the back throw. It's not the enough! Light off stage, though. That up smash, is that going to be doing it? It does. PK Chris in the 1v1 against Light at the end manages to take it. I, are we best three out of five or is this best two out of three territory? They're still sitting down, so... This is best three out of five. Yeah, it's one one for sure. We're absolutely getting a oh, game wait, three. Oh wait, no, but two out of three, right? Blah, blah, blah. Wait. <laughs> yeah, we see this. This neutral getup was. So it's actually a situation that's repeated multiple times before. Right. As we get a look back at a, a couple frames here. So, as we don't, we don't need to see Fox dying. But this right here, the PK flash. Ever since its most recent buff, being able to um, get a, a significant reduction in FAF, meaning that it allows. Uh, PK Chris to throw it out as just a bait. Like, if you're not going to respect this and you're not going to get yourself to ledge early, then you have, then you're going to be stuck dealing with Ness's yo yo. But Light did get to ledge early, and yo yo covers this entire space. So it looks like Light may be playing a little bit greedy, trying to go neutral get up into up smash, neutral get up shield, bait PK Chris into coming down with an unsafe aerial. But PK, uh, PK Chris, he air dodged to the ledge. He oh, went no, for the he, ledge he, dash, he, I think. He, uh, he, fox, he fox illusion. In that situation right there? Well, yeah, he fox illusion into neutral get up. Oh, no. Oh, wait, did he neutral get up? Yeah. Okay. That, but I guess I've never seen fox neutral get up in slow motion before. <laughs> yeah, he did. It looks like a ledge dash. Look at this. It looks like a smash for or, or melee ledge dash, kind yeah. of. <laughs> Whatever. I mean, either way, it is, it's something where it feels like Light knowing that fox can have some trouble uh, finding stocks if, he, uh, if he's not in the if he's not putting himself in the best position for it, it's like, all right, let me put myself in the position to up smash instead of just going for the safe getup attack. Yeah. A little bit too greedy, got called out by yeah. PK Chris as we go right back to PS2. Yeah, also, I just want to quickly mention that in that end, that was kind of, if you're a green team, you normally like that. Light is such a fantastic player. He just won the smash con. So if you end up in that last hit, what, where are you going, buddy? No, he doesn't get the bonk. That is a massive, massive loss for Red Team right here. There was We were already at a neck-and-neck -neck game. But the fact that he's dying for almost no reason, and he's down there again, they that up B was so smart. They haven't gotten hit yet. That up B oh was incredibly God. smart. Yo, can they, we get the JV? Oh, no. <laughs> 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 can we get the JV? Is that a JV 8 or a JV 7? <laughs> Well, it's, we're not going to have to deal with that yet, at the very least. As PK Chris still playing that great game off of uh, on a ledge, when he able, he's able to really win micro interactions. But it, when it comes to the game as a whole, especially with that SD at the beginning, this game has just not been going green red teams away. As the down smash almost closes it out, getting in the way. Gets the tag and the fire. Okay, the the punishing of. K. Chris's recovery. It's a night and day in terms of how he was doing it earlier on versus now he's dying. He's dropping at every single instance as soon as he winds up off stage. That footstool was incredible. There was a couple of chances for uh, where Light was looking for some fair drag down stuff. He ends up finding that fair footstool at the very end. No need to shine. No need for the new stuff. Just go back to the old Tilted stuff. Tilted at 54% on his first stock. What an absolute brutalization this is right now. Red Team, they need to preserve as much damage on this last stock as possible while also making huge plays if they actually want to keep themselves alive right now because oh man green team it felt like it wasn't even necessarily that their synergies cleaned up they just allocated their what their role was much much better like going off stage to actually punish this Ness recovery has paid off so much yeah Fox not really known for the premier edge guarder but this is the great chance for PK Chris to kind of do something. Ended up closing out two stocks in the back to back, three stocks to two now. And both these characters are extremely exploitable. It looks like Light really wants to push on the uh, push on player for a little bit. Try and see what this floaty uh, Peach can do when encountering such a massive uh, speed. Looking for the up air, but missing it ever so slightly. Oh. <laughs> Look at the sandwiching right now, the placement here. We have, honestly, the, the green team dominating the left side, whereas Red staying on the right. 
but it, it's like they can't set up a wall. They can't actually seem to find any meaningful hits. Right there, a bit of a, uh, of a miscommunication. But at this point, you can afford to make those mistakes because you're at 69% and 54% with an entire stock in the bank. At this point, as soon as you drop a single one of either of Red Team's players, you can very comfortably just do a 2v1. Yeah, but this is so many backups coming out from PK Chris. He's got to close, and he does close it out, forcing the stock to be taken. We have got a game here, and yeah. player four waiting towards ledge, being ever so patient. Tilt. He's, he's I'm sorry, but like the fact that Tilde was the stock tank, but now he is that weird Why? that you had the kill screen okay. while PK Chris was still alive. I guess he was in bubble, but there we go. Seeing double kill screen on both of them. Yeah, I guess PK Chris was in the bubble, so you saw the kill screen on the um, on the first character, and then you saw it again. Yeah. Whatever, it's fine because we have got the conclusion. Cat jam, bro. <laughs> we have got the conclusion of that game three set, a nail biter towards the end. I love the just mid set yeah. adaptation from PK Chris and, and from Player Four, taking a little bit. To, oh, what do you do? He the bait he and juked switch. him. <gasps> the bait. <laughs> oh, Reggie. Oh, Reggie. Man, Reggie, Reggie, Reggie. Yeah, Reggie's like <laughs> playing 4D chess while we're playing handshakes. People